Hey, what's going on guys? Tech video today, and we're gonna talk about the difference between static and shared libraries. A lot of the tech videos that I've been making don't do quite as well as some of the advice or how to do this style videos that I've been making, but just to stay true to the channel and hopefully teach everyone basic concepts, I still wanna make tech videos. So this is one of them. All right, so static versus shared libraries. If you use C or C++, you have to understand this. If you use any other language, you can probably get by without really understanding how these things work, but it's still really good to have a basic feel of what it means. The concept of libraries, program linking, and how your applications use libraries is really, really core to how everything runs and how pretty much how your computer operates. So it's just good for us all to understand how it works. All right, let's get started. So as you know, right now, there's just a ton of stuff running on your computer. As you watch this video, you might have Safari or Chrome open up. That's a process. You have other OS level processes that are running. Some are small, some are big, some are resource intensive, some are really simple. They come in all flavors. So naturally, many of these processes share and utilize very similar routines. Let's just pick a routine that's really simple or a piece of code that's highly used. And one good example of this is just printing something on standard out or printing something to the terminal. If almost every program needs to utilize printing something to the screen, do you think every single developer writes their own version of the print function? Actually, every developer could write their own version of print to screen, but it wouldn't really be a good use of their time, right? No one's here to reinvent the wheel. When a lot of applications use common functionality like this, and in this example, our common functionality is just printing something to the screen. Well, when this happens, a lot of that common functionality and common code is packaged up into what we call the library. So what exactly is a library? First thing is that a library itself is just a file. Nothing more, nothing less. It's just a file persisted on your computer and consists of ones and zeros, like every other file. The major difference, the major separating factor that we have to understand between the library and every other application is that you cannot execute a library. If you open up your task manager or you press control alt delete, there are no libraries that are currently running. Everything that's currently running is a process. Those are applications, those aren't libraries. So what we have to understand is that libraries don't actually execute. Applications execute, but they utilize libraries, okay? So this is the main distinguishing factor and we have to be crystal clear on that first. Okay, so now we pretty much have a good idea of why we need libraries, right? If you all understand why we need them, Let's go into how they really work. All right, in this video, we're gonna just talk through two basic, basic ways of how libraries work. One is called shared libraries and the other are called static libraries. Shared libraries, if you use Linux, these are the .so files. If you use Windows, these are .dll files. And if you use Mac, these are uh, .dylib files. Static files, if you see them, they'll be .a files, and on Windows, they're actually .lib files. So different extensions across different platforms, but actually, it's either a static library or a shared library. So they'll take many shapes and forms, but the basic ideas are the same. So every single application is gonna wanna use different libraries at different points in times. So let's just talk through how an application uses a static library versus how they use a shared library. Okay, so now we're gonna start breaking down the major difference between how we use these libraries and just try to follow with me here. All right, we're gonna talk about shared libraries first. If our application utilizes a shared library, our application is gonna reference that library exactly when it needs to reference that library when it's running. So let's just take an example of this. When our application needs to print something to the screen, it's gonna reference another shared library on the computer that knows how to print something to the screen and let that handle it. And none of that code that's doing the printing actually lives in our application. It lives in that shared library. 
all we have to do is reference that library when we need to print something and that other library is just gonna handle it, all right? So no code that does any kind of printing is even included in our application. So what's the one major contingency for using the shared library? Well, in order for our application to run, it pretty much means that the shared library has to be available, right? Because if we don't have that around, we're not gonna know what to reference or how to print anything. So when using a shared library, in order for our application to even run, we need two things. We need to pass somebody the application itself and we need to give them the shared library because the both of them have to work together. Our application is actually just gonna straight up crash if the shared library isn't available. So this is creating a really tight dependency between the two things. Now let's just shift gears really quickly and talk about static libraries, which is almost the complete opposite of a shared library. And let's just talk through it. The first thing that you have to understand is that our program is gonna utilize a static library at compile time. And remember, compile time is before runtime. Something has to be compiled before you can even run it, all right? So utilizing a static library comes at compile time. We take exactly what we need from the static library and we literally copy all the code we need and move it into our application so our application has it now. We take the library that does knows how to print something, we take the function and we take the code that we need and we move that into our application. It's just like a copy and paste. Okay, so what's the major difference in this flow versus using a shared library? Remember in the shared library, the program references the library when it runs. So for your program to work, you have to have the library and the application at the same time or nothing's gonna work. Okay, so for a static library, remember, we kind of did a copy and paste of exactly the code we needed and moved it into our application. So after we did that copy and pasting, we don't even need the library anymore. We can just toss it. We can just use our application because we literally copied everything we need into it. So we just covered the main differentiator between static and shared libraries. And let's talk about one more big pro and con. Imagine if you're dependent on 100 static libraries, then at compile time, you're literally copy and pasting code from 100 libraries into your application. This can make your application get really, really big, really fast, right? The major pro with the shared library is that since you don't do this copy and pasting, all you do is reference the libraries when you need it, keeps your application really, really small because you don't copy any code into it. All you have to do is reference the shared libraries exactly when you need it. So if your application uses shared libraries, it's really small usually. So major takeaway for this point is that whether or not you choose to use a shared or a static library, it affects your application size a lot. And that's something you have to consider when you're developing. When your dependencies get that crazy, Static libraries actually are a little convenient because all those dependencies are already compiled into your program at compile time. So when you give your program to your customer, you just say, here you go, here's the application and that's all you need to run it. On the other hand, if your application utilizes a lot of shared libraries, say you're dependent on 100 shared libraries, that means your program is gonna call 100 different shared libraries when it's running. Well, when you give someone your program, you're gonna to have to be like, hey, here's my program, and here you have to install 100 libraries just to use it, and that's kind of crazy. I remember when I was a kid, one of the times I specifically pretty much bricked or broke my computer is when I messed with some of the DLL files on the Windows computer. And once I messed with those files, it pretty much just destroyed my whole computer. I didn't understand why at the time until I understand how libraries worked, but yeah, those are really, really important files. All right guys, that's the end of the video. Hopefully you have a basic intuition behind how libraries are utilized in your system. It's pretty much the core of how programs are executed, how programs are compiled. Everything uses libraries, all right? No one writes anything from scratch or no one writes everything from scratch. That's just ridiculous. All right guys, so if you wanna take your understanding to the next level, I would also Google how linking works, which is pretty much what we talked about is just on a really, really basic level of these libraries, static for shared, but fundamentally, 
if you understand linking symbols and how symbols are resolved, that'll really push your understanding to the next level. So I would recommend everyone do that if you have some spare time. All right, guys, thanks for watching this tech video. I know not as many people watch these tech videos as some of my other videos, but I still really think that these tech videos, when I go over these core tech concepts, these are really the good stuff. Like, this is the cool stuff. You can always Google how to become a programmer or you can ask my advice. And I made those videos because I thought my advice might be helpful, but I really think that a lot of the core meat, you know, the guts of all this stuff is in the tech. You gotta understand the tech foremost before you get all this crazy advice on how to become an engineer because this is the good stuff, all right? So, hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave me a comment or drop me a like. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already and I'll catch everyone next week. All right, take care.